Algebra 1, 11.6c, what are conjugates? Well, in language, to conjugate a verb means to give a different form of the verb. So if we have run, it would be ran. And if we have write, it would be wrote. That's conjugating verbs. In biology, conjugate means to become temporarily united to exchange genetic material. And bacteria and one-celled organisms do this. But in algebra, a conjugate is a binomial formed by negating the second term of the binomial. So negating means making it a negative or making it an opposite. So if you have x plus 1, we would have x minus 1. See? It negates the first one. It makes it a negative. It goes from plus to minus. They're opposites. It could even be from minus to plus. If we have 1 plus the square root of 2, when we a conjugate of it would be 1 minus square root of 2. For 2x minus 1, we would have 2x plus 1. See? It's just changing the sign. If we had x cubed plus 2, we would get x cubed minus 2. And when we multiply by conjugates, we get squares. See? All right, so we can use conjugates to rationalize binomial denominators containing radicals. So you remember rationalizing denominators. We did this just in the previous videos. If we have the square root of 2 thirds, we can multiply the numerator and denominator by this denominator over denominator. See? And when we do uh, square root of 3 times square root of 3, we get square root of 9, and the square root of 9 is a 3. Right? Because 3 times 3 is 9. Well, that pulled the radical sign off of these and made it just a 3. And then, of course, the numerator stays as square root of 6. So that was rationalizing the denominator, and we removed the radical sign. We could do the same thing with binomial denominators. Okay? So we can rationalize the denominator. So we had 5 divided by 1 minus square root of 2. And what we're going to do is take this denominator and use the conjugate of this denominator as 1 plus square root of 2. I'm going to put it over itself as a 1, because the numerator and denominator are the same, so it equals 1. And we're going to multiply the numerator by this and the denominator by this. We're going to get 5 times 1 plus square root of 2. And on the bottom, we're going to get 1 minus square root of 2 times 1 plus square root of 2. We multiply as the sum and difference of two expressions. This numerator is staying the same, but the denominator ends up becoming a 1 times a 1. That's a 1 squared. And this square root of 2 ends up becoming minus square root of 2 squared. Square root of 2 times square root of 2. And the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 4. And the square root of 4 is just a 2, isn't it? So now we've got 1 times 1, which is a 1, minus 2. Now, we just subtract this denominator and we get a negative 1. 1 minus 2 is a negative 1. And remember, when you divide by a negative, we did that back in Chapter 2. I'll have a link to that in this, in this description. This ends up becoming negative 5. See? So negative 5 gets distributed to each term inside the parentheses. So negative 5 times 1 is negative 5, and negative 5 times Square root of 2 is negative 5 square root of 2, and there's our answer. See? That's a little bit above your level. It was in the challenge section of the book, but it was in the book, so I figured I might talk about it. And we'll talk about these more when we do Algebra 2. You're going to be doing conjugates in Algebra 2, but now you understand that it's just the opposite sign, isn't it? Our next video, 11.7a, we're going to talk about the Pythagorean theorem and the legs and the hypotenuse of the triangle. And if you want to see the video that actually talked about rationalizing the denominator or dividing with radicals, those links are going to be in this description. Of course, with all the other ones from Chapter 11, talking about rational numbers and, uh, and radicals, okay? So... Let's talk about the Pythagorean Theorem. I hope this was helpful, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.